All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And as promised, even though admittedly late, I'm going to tell you about the Moria book. First off, this is not needed. If you want to play the One Ring, you could spend years of real time playing the One Ring and never going anywhere near the Halls of Durin. I mean, Erebor is a big place, or Eridor. And you could have tons of adventures in the Northlands and all that. However, since I got the book out and I told you I'd tell you a little bit about it, I'm not going to go into detail for the same reason. I've read this a couple of times and I don't want you guys to read it and be like, oh, this sucks, blah, 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 right? Um, first thing, it comes with this map on the inside. And the second thing, like the other books, it comes with a big fold-out map, which is the same. And the map, which I will show you, it shows you the top down of Moria, as well as, I don't know how well you can see that, there's a top down and there's a side view as well. And then it also has on the back, like a battle map. Because this game operates on whether you're forward, uh, rearward, whatever, right? So, so, yeah, we've got this map here, and it it will, you could use it for anything just to keep track. This game actually would work well with Dungeon Professor's new version of the UDT, where it has the concentric rings. Uh, but you know, it is whatever. Um, again, though, free league as usual, kicking ass, bringing massively great quality product. I mean, everything about this book screams quality, well made, right? Now, written by Gareth Hanrahan, who I seem to think might be the guy who wrote Traveler, uh, Mongoose Traveler. Am I wrong? I don't know. But this thing, this is like more than just like a adventure, a setting. It's more than a campaign. I mean, it, it, there is just so much stuff here. Uh, of course, the problem is that the majority of it wants to kill you. See, it, it's got the tell of years of the city and it goes through each year and who did what. Like in the year 2949, Bilbo receives Gandalf and Balin at Bag End. Uh, in the year 2941, Thorin and company return to Erebor. The dragon is slain and the kingdom restored. Many orcs are slain in the Val Five Armies, including Bog, son of Azog. The White Council attacks Dog Dor and drives out the Necromancer. There's no sign of Doran's ring. Dane Ironfoot becomes king under the mountain as Dane the Second. So, you know, it goes all the way to everything. I think the game takes place before Bilbo le before Frodo leaves, uh, and before Bilbo goes to um so it's in the 40s there. Um, but the art in this book, I dropped the map. The art in this book is amazing. And again, like a lot of the art in the Tolkien books, you can tell it's a bit on the cool side. It's lots of blues and, and blue greens. But Moria in your game, it gives a whole explanation for why. Why Moria might be a thing in your game. Talks about the lore that players might know about it. Um, and then you have the different orc chiefs of Moria. There are six of them because Moria is split um, into various different warring factions of orcs, goblins, whatever we're calling them today. You know, plus there's things in Moria a lot darker than orcs. Then we've got a, a note on your patrons and rivals. Uh, you know, like who might hire you to go into Moria. 
so here we've got Frora, daughter of Dwaylin. She is a young dwarf. She is the daughter of the famous Dwaylin of the Twelve Companions. So, you know, Balin and Dwaylin and all that. Um, or Balin. She is but a child when her father went on the quest. And his success transformed the fortunes of Frora, elevating her from the daughter of a smith to the princess of the kingdom under the mountain. For a time, this sudden glory changed Frora for the worse. She grew to be arrogant Hellraiser back when she lived in Erebor. Known for getting drunk and starting fights or throwing money around death. To teach the girl proper dwarven discipline and modesty, King Dane ordered she be sent to the Blue Mountains and um, Brora who is close to her uncle Balin and shares his dreams of reclaiming Moria instead of going to the blue mountains or roaming middle earth and errantry. She seeks adventurers to scout out Moria. She has a small fortune at her disposal and all the tales that Balin told her as a child. She has great enthusiasm for the thought of returning to Khazad doom and believes it is to be her great mission. She just like recovering the mountain was her father's task in life. So her occupation is a dwarf princess and her distinctive feature is she's eager, but lordly. And then of course, that's a patron you could encounter. I read all about her, but there's multitudes more of them. Rora will hire you to scout parts of M Moria out. Is that a good idea? Probably not. But, you know, if that's what you want to do, do it. Then we've got our list for rumors, landmarks, obscure landmarks, um, etc. And a whole chapter on how to run Moria. Like, you know, Moria has endured thousands of years of looting. But the dwarves worked here for 7,000 years, and if anyone knows how to hide their treasure, it's Durin's folk. Easy pickings may be long gone, but there are still hordes here, locked away beyond the reach of greedy orcs. So, you know, themes of sorrow and fear, triumph of the enemy, horrors beyond knowledge, And it says here, a few words Tolkien wrote are as mysterious as Gandalf's description of his experiences in the underworld. We fought for the living or under the living earth where time has not counted. Ever he clutched me and ever I hewed him till at last he fled into dark tunnels. They were not made by Durin's folk, Gimli son of Gloin. Far below, far, far below the deepest delvings of the dwarves, the world is gnawed by nameless things. Even Sauron knows them not. They're older than he. So for all the terror of the Balrog, there were things under there that were worse. So keep that in mind. And then you've got journeys in the dark, how to handle um, the characters moving from place to place. Because like I said, remember, Mora is miles across and deep. So it's not like, let's go into this dungeon with, 20 rooms and whatever. I mean, you could be on a grand, grand dwarven highway for 10 miles. And of course, uh, get attacked by orc warbands. They have uh, random charts for how to generate random rooms uh, and random orc band generators. Like the quote is, there are orcs, many of them, he said, and some are large and evil, black orcs of mortar. For the moment, they're hanging back, but there's something else there. A great cave troll, I think, and and more than one. So if, if the characters encounter orcs, you can random if you want to see what kind of orcs, like how many. Are there any trolls with them? And then, of course, it's got, we've got our silk. Chapter four is Thel Foes. And it talks about the orcs of Moria, the warlords of Moria, uh, 
orcs of Mordor that are in Moria. Um, the Balrog is mentioned. And then other foul things like ash wraiths and uh, cave bats that are big enough to grab a human and carry it off and eat him. Mar marrow eaters. Um, stone to toads. Tappers. Uh, cave dogs of Moria, which are strange hairless dogs that lurk in the depths. And it says here that they are the descendants of the dwarves' dogs, but now they've changed and become feral. We've got chapter five, Mansions of the Dwarves, which, you know, goes into detail about the Dimeral Stare and all of that. The Mounds of At Azano Bizarre. The East Gate with the map. And it and the, all the maps of specific locations are done like that. Very, very cool stuff. So, you know, all of the main areas that, like the first hall, has a really nice map of it. And it just goes on and on and on. The armories of the Third Deeps. Uh, the Poisoned Halls, the Upper Armory, uh, the Mauler, who apparently is a, 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 a troll. Uh, a Goblin Village. Yep. There's a Goblin Village. The Ledge of Woe. The Udon Temple, which is where the fire worshippers of the orc clan Udon, that's their temple. And they have a priest type thing there called Through the Fire Speaker. Nice. The Den of Forgotten Stars. The Balrog's Throne Room. The Foundations of Stone, which is a hidden room, very difficult to get to. The Knob Tunnels and the Lakes Below. And, of course, they got a picture of something with tentacles coming up out of the lakes below to get you. Um, it's the Watcher in the Water. Apparently, it can go um, under the mountains. Or there's another one there. Balance Expedition, I too once passed the Demeral Gate, the Welling Horror, I don't know what that is, but it's something you, you could encounter. And then it's got a chapter on Mithril and how what Mithril can do and, and how Mithril weapons and armor and stuff affect the game. And a whole index of magical items that you could have found in, in Moria. Like the Harp of Cascades, Iron Shod Boots, the Scabbard of Thunder. That sounds cool. Silver Dream of the Smith. It's a necklace. And then you've got the Dwarves of Nograd and Belagost. And these are dwarves that live, I believe... Uh, let me look. This is a new kindred that you could be. You could choose to be a dwarf of Nograd and Belagost. Which are dwarves from the Blue Mountains, I guess. Let's see. Belagost, Nograd, and the Blue Mountains. Yes. So apparently these dwarves are different than the kinfolk of Durin in some way. I'm not sure exactly how. But... Uh, they cannot use bows or great bows, great spears or great shields. And they love none but themselves. They are petty. And if you choose a fellowship focus, it has to be another dwarf. 
because apparently these dwarves don't like anybody. And then there's a chapter four solo play with sheets you can print out to, to keep track of your group and everything like that. And then tons of lore tables, just all the information you need to run a campaign where the characters are adventuring through Moria. And then on the back of it, another copy of that incredibly wonderful map. Just, it's, it's really just a wonderful map. So... I don't remember how much this costs. I think it's like $40 or $45. Either way, it's definitely worth it. And two of the players in my group who play dwarves have already stated how they really want to go to Moria at some point, which I think is probably where the game will end when they get killed by everything in Moria. But, you know, you never know. It could turn out good, right? Probably not. Uh, so regardless... That is the Moria book. Again, the One Ring. I highly suggest this game. It's a good game. If you want to play a game without all the ambiguity of should I kill orcs or are orcs actually Hispanic or Spaniards from Castile or whatever, and all the BS, play the One Ring. It doesn't have all the BS that is currently um, corrupted. Uh, Wizards of the Coast role-playing game. And uh, it's set in the world of Tolkien. I mean, come on, guys. That's the best fantasy world ever made, right? We all believe that, right? Lord of the Rings? I mean, at least I hope we all do. Okay, uh, that's all my Lord. Well, no, I could do the Rivendell set. But honestly, it's just Rivendell. So we'll see. Anyway, peace and love. Let me get this uploaded.